Okay, so I just want to spend a little bit of time on this conceptual point of interpretation of the regression coefficients. And a framework I like to think about for a lot of statistics comes from uh, Andy Gelman, who gives us this kind of Venn diagram. And it's like, what is statistics really all about? It's at the intersection of a few different things. One is measurement. That is, how do we measure the variables, the constructs, the things we care about? How do we operationalize them? I spend a lot of my time in my work thinking about measurement. Uh, but that is not the focus of this part that we're going to emphasize right here. Uh, the other is variation. If you don't have variation, if you don't have variables, we're not really doing statistics. Things need to vary. Things need to differ in order for us to do the kind of statistical analyses we've been talking about. And the last one that's sometimes overlooked but is important for interpretation is comparison. In any statistical analysis, there is, at least implicitly, a particular comparison that we're making. And that's what I want to emphasize. What is the proper interpretation in terms of what are we comparing when we interpret a regression coefficient? Let me start with how it's commonly done. So we've seen regression models uh, already now. We have something like the predicted value for somebody is equal to intercept plus slope times the predictor for that person. And our slope is interpreted as the expected change in the outcome variable y based on a one unit or one point change in the predictor x. And we've tried to stress this interpretation, or at least these concepts, so far. Uh, the notion of the expected change, that is it's the expected change, communicates we're talking about model-based averages. It's not every single person, if they moved up one point on x, would move up this many points on y, but that's our expectation on average, what would happen. So to go back to an early example we had, this is a bivariate regression, test one variable predicting test two variable. Uh, there's our slope. Uh, for the regression line, 0.89. And that tells us that for a one unit change in x, moving, say, from 5 to 6 on x, this is the expected change we would see in y. In a multiple regression context, um, our interpretation is a little bit expanded. We have to recognize, as we talked about, or at least started to talk about last time, um, that the slope, say, B1, is the expected change in the outcome based on a one unit change in X1. Now, holding all else, in this case we have one more predictor, constant. So it's saying just X1 moves up by one unit. Leave X2 alone. Don't let that move at all. It's just X1 that's moving. What happens to Y? Uh, so putting things together here, the term change suggests something like the coefficient of how much we expect that particular person's value of y, the outcome variable, to change if that person's x value were changed, but nothing else about them has changed. This notion of change is, is often thought of as an intra-individual concept. How does that person change within that person? This might be what we want out of our regression model. Hey, if your score moves up by 1 on x, we'd expect your y to move up by this. That might be what we want, but I don't think that's quite exactly what we get from regression. So I'm going to push towards a different and what I'd say is a better interpretation. Our slope B1 is the average or expected difference in Y for people who differ on X1 by one unit. I've removed the word change and now emphasizing the word difference. This term differ emphasizes that the coefficient conveys how much we'd expect two different people or two different groups of people, how their y values we would expect to be different if they were different by just one point on x and nothing else. So this is an inter-individual concept. Going back to our picture, our picture is still the same. Our regression model is still the same. In the previous interpretation, I thought for a one unit change in x, what happens on Y? 
change kind of induces the notion of people are moving. They're changing over time. Or if we could move them up on the scale one point, what would happen to their y value? That's the interpretation I want to push away from and instead talk about people with a difference of one point on the predictor variable. So here this comparison isn't if we took these people and moved them up. Instead, it's we got two groups of people. They differ by one point on x. What do we expect their difference to be on y? In the common interpretation, we're talking about a change in y for a one unit change in, say, one predictor x1, holding the other predictor constant. Say, it's like, take this person and wiggle their x1 value. Move it up one point. Don't let their x2 value change. What do we expect to be different for y? The you know, holding all else, all else constant communicates that we're just changing their x1. Again, I don't think that's the best interpretation. I think a better one is to say, all right, in the multiple regression case, the slope B1 is the average or expected difference in Y for people who differ on X1 by one unit or one point, but are identical in all other terms. That is, think about people who are the same on X2, and these two people differ by one point on X1. What would we expect their difference to be on Y? The difference, or the term differ, suggests that the coefficient is not about one person changing. It's about two different people or two different groups of people. We're not changing anything within people, so we're not holding constant anything about those people. It's not like change this aspect of them but not others. It's really two groups of people. So in this interpretation, the slope captures a comparison. Not a comparison of someone and a hypothetical version of themselves that's one point different, but two groups of people that are alike in every way, except they differ by one point on this predictor value. Which comparison should we use or should we invoke? Well, like all statistical models, regression relies on some notion of variation. We've seen this. We got x variables that vary. We got y variables that vary. In fact, we've tried to say a lot of regression is understanding how much of y's variation can we explain. The two different interpretations are really suggestive of these two different comparisons that lie underneath. The common interpretation is a within person or intra individual concept. We're changing somebody by changing their value of x1 by one unit and holding all else constant about them. What would we think is different on the outcome variable? Again, the same picture would hold, and we'd be interpreting the slope as a one unit change in that person. In the interpretation I'm going to push towards, um, what we recognize is we're never really observing people who themselves are at different values. We don't actually have the, this person and then somehow change their x value. Let's recognize that. Indeed, what our model capitalizes on and uses is a comparison about different people who are at different values of the x variables. So a preferred interpretation would not say, as this person changes, it's a difference between groups of people. They're alike in all ways, except they differ by one point on this predictor. What should we think they should, how should they differ on the outcome variable y? So the comparison here is not between one person and a hypothetical version of themselves at another time where they've moved up x but between two different groups of people that we have. Again, the picture is going to be the same. This is a difference in interpretation. Now, it's usually at this point that you might be wondering, well, that's what I want is that interpretation of change. I want to know what's going to happen or what I should expect to happen for this person's outcome 
if I were somehow to increase their x value by one point. Uh, if you want that, there are better ways to do that than the regression models we're talking about in our course. You might want to consider collecting repeated measures or longitudinal data to track their change over time as they change on x and y. That would be terrific. There are times when cross-sectional data, that is one collection, one snapshot in time, can support these common or desired interpretations. But in general, that's not the case. An example? Sure. Um, ba, 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 ba. So let me go to this picture that has change. I got people who take test one and test two. And I got somebody here who scores a five on test one. And I said, if I could somehow teach them and improve their learning so that they were better and did better on test one by one point, what would I expect them to score differently on test two? That's talking about sort of changing that person. That's the common interpretation that I don't think is rigorously justified by regression. Instead, with the same data, same regression line, the interpretation I have is that people vary on test one. Some people have a five on test one, other people have a six on test one. That's a one point difference. What do I expect the difference in Y to be for those two groups or two different uh, subsets of people? I'd expect the difference of Y of whatever the slope is. So the implicit comparison is not if I could somehow manipulate this person. That may be ultimately what we want to get out of our analysis, but I don't think that's quite what regression gives us. Yes? I don't feel like um, regression is Yes, the regression analyses we have described do not get, give this to us. But this is how you will most likely encounter the interpretation. Hey, for one point change in x1, we expect on average uh, this change in, x, in y holding x2 or all else constant. And I will sometimes use that terminology because that's how I have for most of my career thought about it, but I don't think it's quite precise enough. You can kind of run into trouble with some interpretations that way. A more precise interpretation of the regression coefficient is, think about people who are on everything else the same, but they differ by one unit on this predictor. What do we expect them, or how do we expect them to differ on the outcome? That's a between people rather than a within person comparison. If you continue on in your statistics training, my guess is you will encounter different models, longitudinal analyses, or more, um, even for cross-sectional data, approaches that try to say, no, what if we really could manipulate this person and move them up one point on the predictor variable? But that is not what we are able to accomplish uh, with the regression techniques we've covered so far. I put this in because this is something you will likely see represented in different ways. The interpretation that I'm saying is a preferred one is probably not what you'll encounter most often, but I do think it's uh, more, more accurate and more precise. It's a slippery concept, and I'm sure you'll catch me over the rest of our course slipping into, oh yeah, let's change by one point. I oh, actually mean for a difference of one point, not for a change. Yeah. I would say a difference in outcome. So I would say for a, a, a one point difference on the predictor, we'd expect a difference of this on the outcome. Okay, not yeah. Increase, just like a yeah, because because increase, I think to most readers would sort of suggest a yeah, like okay. they would increase. It, it's an increase in our expectation of what would happen. My expectation is it'd be 0.89 higher. Okay. That's what has increased is my expectation, not any person score. Okay. It's a slippery, and I I admit what I'm saying is not standard. Like you will not. It's not what you're going to encounter most. Most of the regression things you'll encounter and read about and so on will say, yeah, if you change x by this, 
this is the expected change in y. And I think that that is just a slippery slope into mis misunderstandings in other places. <laughs>